Okay, well today we're going to give you some basic facts about Georgia. And I've discovered since I decided to move here that people don't know too much. Even people who come to visit here do not seem to know anything. I just had friends come visit. I said, did you do any research before you came? They knew almost nothing. And uh, that's a shame because Georgia is a really fascinating place. And um, yeah, the alphabet can be kind of frightening. Uh, yeah, the uh, language has consonant clusters that make your mouth just pucker and go pop and do strange things. But it's not a frightening country at all. It's a very safe country and full of very interesting things. So I thought what we would do on today's little uh, excursion into Georgia on Georgian Crossroads is, uh, by the way, my name is Burn, Burn Power, and uh, I decided to move here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to, I'm going to give you the basic facts of Georgia. Now you can find many of these facts on Wikipedia or any other place that you feel like looking at. But I thought what I would do is give you my interpretation of the basic facts of Georgia, just because we're near the beginning of my uh, series on Georgia here. I might as well. So without any further ado, Georgia. <laughs> Name of the country. Georgia, as we call it in English, Georgie in French, uh, some variation on Gruzia in Slavic countries, are all names that other people call this country. But its real name is Sakarbelo, the land of the Kartvels. But you can call it Georgia. They don't mind. Uh, in fact, they consider it one of the names of their country. Whenever you see things written down, it's almost always in, uh, called Georgia. Second, the geography. Where is Georgia? Europe or Asia? It's pretty much on the border, but in fact, it acts much more European than Asian. I'm not going to get into that right now, but essentially, even by most standard descriptions of what constitutes Europe, at least part of it is in Europe, much like part of Turkey is in Asia. But I would say that actually Georgia is the last European Christian country uh, going east. But it is also a crossroads for many of the great empires and invaders of history. The Greeks, the Romans, the Persians, the Arabs, the Mongols, the Turks, and of course the Russians have all passed through this zone along with many, many others. Georgia is firmly inside the Caucasus Mountains. It was on the Silk Road. It has the widest variety of climatic zones for a country so small. It has extreme alpine geography, deserts, and subtropical conditions. Georgia is about the size of Switzerland or Austria with mountains taller than the Alps, and they grow oranges here. And again, with so many climatic zones, it's also a great uh, land for biodiversity as well. Third, they speak Georgian, or what they call Kartuli. The thing you need to know about the Georgian language is this. It is not Russian. Erti, Ori, Sami, Otri, Huti, Ekfsi, Shvidi, Rva, Tsra, Ati. The culture isn't Russian. The Georgian language has nothing to do with Slavic languages. They do not use the Cyrillic alphabet except to communicate to Russians, and their language is written in a unique script, only one of 14 unique scripts, alphabets in the world. While walking down the street, you may see signs that look like this, or this, or sometimes what I call Kartinglish, it looks a little like this. Don't panic. Most people under 35 know some English. Most students under 25 have learned English in school, but you should learn a few Georgian phrases to be polite. And we'll mention a few of them in these videos as we go, but these videos won't be a language course. I'll recommend you some better language courses on YouTube that'll help you learn a bit of Kartuli. Uh, I'll put those links in the description below. But uh, well, let me give you one word. Gamarjoba. So it's Gamarjoba. Gamarjoba. 
That's like, hello, uh, that's a great word to learn. Uh, what it really means is victory. And I've often thought one of the things about Georgian history is it's just the land has been fought over so many times that uh, they're basically saying, well, they're saying victory to you, but what they're basically saying is we're going to get by, we're going to make it. Uh, but you can find English signs on all over Tbilisi, which is where we are going to stay for a while in these videos. If, if you know Russian, it can be helpful. People above the age of 40 generally have learned Russian, and uh, so do many of the younger people. We will discuss the language later in another video at another time, when I have a bit more courage. But let me give you a note. This is an important thing to remember. Really, really important. Georgia is not Russia. One thing you should never do is compare Georgia to Russia. Georgian history goes back to the time of the ancient Greeks and way before, actually. In the story of Jason and the Argonauts, the end of the world was, in fact, Colchis, present-day Georgia. Medea was a real Colchian woman. I was even talking to someone the other day who said to me, yeah, but she wasn't that good. I mean, they were criticizing her like the way they were talking about her was like, you know, she just lived down the street a few years ago. Um, the history is is uh, something you really think about a lot here. Uh, wine production in Georgia goes back at least to 6000 B.C. Yes, that's B.C. and that's very important here uh, that you uh, realize Georgian is an Orthodox Christian country, but we'll discuss that at another point. With wine production going back that far, that makes Georgia the first place on earth to ferment grapes. And, in fact, the oldest bones outside of Africa were found here somewhat recently in Georgia, and they go back over a million years. So Georgia's been around a while. Um, also, comparing to Georgia to Russia, especially saying things like Georgians are Russians is a huge cultural faux pas. Do not do it. Recently, there have been protests related to the fact that Russia still has military forces inside the technical boundaries of Georgia. Here's a little taste of some of those protests recently this summer. Uh, give you some idea. I didn't get the full uh, effect of it. Uh, it. It got a lot more intense, but this will give you some little idea. <laughs> And then here's what happened to a bust of Putin. Uh, this bus started off as a pretty normal bust of Putin, and over time after these protests, this is what happened. Uh, this is this bust is still currently in front of the Parliament buildings on Rustavelli Avenue. Uh, and a funny thing is, when I lived in Alaska, I would tell people, uh, "Yeah, I'm going to be moving to Georgia." And of course, the first thing they thought about is, well, well, is that near Macon? <laughs> you know, going to Atlanta? And the answer is, no, I'm going to the Georgia, what, well, Sakartvelo. And uh, the funny thing is, is that people then go, oh, Russia. And you're like, no, it's not Russia. It's Georgia. It's Sakartvelo. Georgian people are quite fascinating with a culture completely different than any other people on earth. And as far as Georgian history goes, forget Lord of the Rings. I mean, yeah, if you like Tolkien, read Georgian history. I mean, uh, besides the almost elfin, uh, uh, elfin is the wrong word, I, I would get in trouble with Tolkien for saying that, uh, elvish script of the Georgian alphabet, you should see their history. I mean, it just is cosmic. And their folklore is something uh, very hard to uh, capture in any other form. I will give you flavors of that in another video, but let me just say this. If, if you're the kind of person who likes, uh, uh, you know, strange uh, histories in invented worlds, you should look into Georgian history. It'll turn your head inside out. Well, thanks for watching this introductory video to the country of Georgia or Sakartbelo. 
and we'll be discussing more again if you come here. Uh, the first two words you should learn are Gamar Joba, that's hello, uh, literally victory to you. And the other one is Madloba, which is thanks. Uh, and uh, I think the first word one should learn in any language is thanks, because you're going to be thanking a lot of people for you know, the fact they're helping you and you don't know what you're doing. But hello, of course, is a very close second. So uh, come back again to Georgian Crossroads. We've got a lot more to discuss and show you. Uh, I've got coming up, I've got planned a trip into the uh, Caucasus. I've got uh, uh, attempts to drive to different places that failed. That should be interesting, eh? Um, I've got, uh, you know, life in Tbilisi, uh, I've got something about the street art in Tbilisi, which I think is really fascinating. Uh, all of this and more coming up on Georgian Crossroads. Stay tuned. This is Burn. Check you later. Subscribe, please. I am really trying to build up the numbers on this, so subscribe. Become a supporter of this channel. Talk to you later.